Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 20 of Ultron the Real Robot. This project is about building a real robot that looks like Ultron from the Avengers. And in part one, I explain how this is going to be controlled, which is partly from a motion capture suit, other sensors in the environment, and partly by its own AI, which I need to come on to in future episodes. Last time, I built this crazy motor mixer, which basically has a motor that swivels between three gears, driving worm gears, driving output gears. And those three motors are going to move the elbow, cause this to rotate, and open and close the hand, and the hand is of course rotating with the forearm. So I've got two of these, and they of course fit onto the lower arm. So today I'm going to try and build the mechanism for the elbow and all of that stuff so it works. There's a gear in the bottom, so this is going to run on a tooth track attached to the elbow. The hand will of course be fixed to this mechanism. So let's get on with it and have a look at some CAD. I thought I'd do the geared track first and I've, as before, placed the teeth here manually with the circular pattern tool and it looks like it should mesh okay but I printed a small test print that wasn't as high as that so I can test it and it looks like that's alright so we can proceed with the design. I've merged those teeth into the track and you'll notice I've actually made the track shorter and that actually gives me a further distance that I can rotate so I can get nearly 60 degrees out of this track before the end clashes with the sides here. So if the track's any longer, then of course I get less rotation, but this way I'm still just about hanging on by one tooth at the extremity. Here's the whole cradle assembly, so the elbow hinge is going to be down here, and then the forearm will rotate around the elbow joint. So I've got these hubs at the ends, which correspond with the holes I already left, and the track of course is the right radius that that gear always runs uniformly on the track. I split that part into multiple parts so that these can be printed flat on the bed with the circles the right way round so the back surface will be flat down and I split the cradle into two. I've got some uh, alignment holes here so that I can put some steel in to get those aligned and screw holes in the bottom to align the track so that's keyed in the right place. I've laid those parts out flat for printing on the print bed. I managed to get one of the sides of that cradle piece diagonally on the Lolzbot Taz bed in one piece, which is good. So I just need to print four of those because of course we've got to do both arms and then we should be all good. Here are those ends with their step in just being printed so that I can screw them onto the two halves of the cradle. Both the cradles are assembled, one is fitted and one is not. So we've got one there of its track on, they seem to mesh pretty well. So that one is fitted there and I've just put some studding in the ends there to hold it. So now if I spin the worm gear around we should be able to see that that track moves backwards and forwards. I need to make sure that I can make this motor move backwards and forwards between the different gears there to switch the different outputs. But I still haven't planned where I'm going to put the servo. So I think what I'm going to do is in fact put the servo on here. I've got two of them. They're fairly beefy metal gear ones, but they should be fine. So I'll stick those there. So I'm going to make a new top plate to go on these with a slot cut out and the servo mounting things to screw the ears into. And then that servo can just push that motor backwards and forwards and we need to make a lever to go on there as well and a little lever to push it. I've designed and fitted one side of the servo holder. This is the mirror that goes on the other one. So we can see we've got a cutout here for the servo horn and I've mounted this one in here. So I think what's going to happen is the top of this is going to swivel right over and push this as it does so. I'm not sure if these servo horns have got enough reach on them. So I'm going to need to make a little lever mechanism and move this around manually and see how much it slides up and down and then decide if I need to make an extension. Here's the CAD so far with that plate fitted and I've also made this little piece here which is going to be solvent welded to the motor bracket to allow it to be pushed by the servo. So I've got a little slither, a little gap down the side there which should be exactly the same distance to where the end of the servo horn is so we can get the lever in. And here are my parts here ready to be printed so I'm printing the two opposites and servo rods to push it in different lengths. I fitted those parts so I used the shorter lever in the ends and obviously now when the servo moves it moves the motor between the different gears so there it's nice and locked in position. In the middle it's pretty good, although the servo's in the middle of its leverage, so it's not going to be as locked, but there's not too much resistance to that cradle turning. In this position we've got a bit of a problem though, because this can pop up, 
So I probably need to put an end stop on there and make sure that in fact when the motor turns in the direction that's going to push it that way, it's actually winding the elbow up. So it's winding against an end stop. So that's a small thing I have to consider. But apart from that, it works pretty well. Let's talk about series elastic actuators. So in the other joints, I've got force feedback that I've built into the mechanics. So each output is basically split in two and inside is a flexible rubber element and some force sensitive resistors that can measure force in each direction. So it can work out how much load is on all of these joints, the shoulder and everywhere else. And it can also work out if you're pushing it back and depending on its mood that's defined by its AI, it may or may not comply or it might push you back. So we need to do the same thing with all of the joints in this, which is three axis. So the elbow, we're going to pull a string to pull it up. So we could measure the string tension. So if you pull it one way, it gets tighter. And if you push it the other way, then it gets looser. So we could do it that way. The rotation of the arm isn't going to be too hard to do because we're putting the hand on the end coupled onto this piece. So we can have basically a compliant section between the hand and the forearm with the sensor in it rather than putting it on the output gear that drives it. So if you grab its hand and twist it, it knows that you're twisting it. The only slightly tricky one is pulling the hand up, which I think is going to be compliant anyway, so it may or may not have force feedback. It may just be rubber tendons and rubber fingers that are quite compliant anyway, so you can kind of get your hand out of it if it grips it. But again, we could use a string tension to kind of work out if it's being back driven if someone's really mashing the hand. I started to design the elbow out and um, I built this piece here and we can see that in fact this rotates and docks quite nicely with the pulley so obviously what we need to do is make sure the string from that pulley in there can uh, pull against this and pull all the way in a fashion where it closes so obviously that docks quite nicely what's going to happen was um, that we're going to have a kind of thing on top of here with a pulley that pulls over and when that thing is docked we find that the pulley sits nicely in this cutout and then we get obviously line of sight through to the pulley so that seems quite a good approach to making the elbow. This needs to attach onto the existing upper arm which is a rotational piece and below that is actually the pot that measures the position as well as the nuts that hold the studding on so it sits on bearings so there needs to be a bit of a gap there. Um, so I've got the studding extended from there, I left holes in the sides of this piece so I can fix the lower arm on so those extend down and the height can be adjustable but essentially that means that this piece can rotate around so if we just rotate these that will be the arm flat there it does mean of course that um, we've got a bit of an issue where the forearm is set further forward than the rest of the arm but there is a bicep to be built so hopefully we can get away with it so I decided that I'd quite like to know how long the arm is when it's done before I start printing pieces so I started to work on the forearm here um, and the, the hand mount, so essentially the hand is going to be mounted to this whole assembly and rotate with it. I've got some nice cutouts here so the cradle can go between it. We can just rotate that around and we should still get our 60 degrees or so and the uh, thing fits into the slot there. So then we'll have a block mounted on the front that's got the hand rotation on and the series elastic actuator. I've started to work on a block on the front here to build the actual wrist rotation on and we need to not forget of course it's pulled by the pulley right inside. Here's the final cutout for the front so we need a series elastic actuator so I've got a main pivot that will take a piece of 8mm studding and another recess with some screw holes on the inside and the outside and that'll allow me to have a thing that's anchored and a thing it rotates against and hopefully some wires that drop out the bottom here in this cavity so that we can put some force sensitive resistors in there. I'm not going to design that yet but I've left it so I can. I've also left a hole in the top there which has got direct line of sight to the pulley so that we can get the string there that pulls the hand and of course as I say this whole mechanism is um, fixed to this thing so it doesn't rotate independently from it so obviously this hole always stays aligned with the pulley. I decided to put it all together to see how long it is and it's really long, it's actually far longer than it should be. Um, it's 479mm long and that's without the hand which is far far too long and it's mainly due to this wasted space we have with this and the distance we have to keep because of that thing with the pot on the bottom. So uh, we need to redesign this really to make it much more compact. I started by positioning the uh, sort of upper arm where I want it so it's more in line with the forearm. The forearm sticks out a bit but that's fine because that's generally how it should be um, and if we rotate this around we should be able to see that in fact this whole thing fits quite neatly 
and docks at 90 degrees there so the place where the string is attached from that pulley will be on the bottom of this existing piece but I can solvent weld a hook on for that so that should be no problem. I've then gone and added these hinge parts and they're going to be, ha be uh, parts that bolt onto the existing cradle so I've used the existing pivot point so I can put a bolt through and the rest will be solvent welded and that gives me a joint there now this uh, will rotate around the fixed part, this part is in fact fixed with the pot on which measures the angle so there needs to be clearance for that to rotate around at least sort of plus minus I don't know 80 degrees say in each direction so I think that's going to work out pretty well it also makes everything much more uh, shorter and much more compact so we've got uh, 386 now for the total length we should just put Ultron's hands and the thin bit of wrist there right on its thighs where they should be to be proportioned like a human Here's one of the forearm sections that holds the hand on. And these are the end parts which hold the series elastic actuator for the wrist. There we go, so I've got those fronts on. You'll notice I remembered the countersinks this time. I fitted the forearm now so all the parts are done and I put these parts on with little bits of studding that screw into the upper arm. So now we can see that that hinges quite nicely, obviously this piece rotates around and of course the forearm rotates against the track as well. So the only concern with changing that hinge point is that of course now the leverage angle isn't so big so having the hinge point right at the back and the string at the front gave me quite a lot of leverage to pull it up so my only concern is now that the hinge point is further forward in fact it's here and the string is just in there so we'll have to see if that still works and how much load it can lift other than that I think the length of the arm is pretty good if I stand up it's pretty much the same length as my arm even though Ultron's bigger so it does look a bit big if I zoom out but ultimately the hands are going to come somewhere halfway down its thighs and its kind of belt is about halfway down the forearm, the same as me. Here's a long shot of it with both arms on, so I think it looks pretty good in proportion and everything. I still need to test those elbows though. So I've attached some cord, it's actually, uh, despite its thinness, it's some pretty tough uh, shark fishing line which is doubled up. You can just see it there, I probably need something thicker though really. But um, I'm happy to announce this isn't a complete disaster. So it can in fact lift its forearm, which is pretty good. It's a bit slow, but as I mentioned, I might need to make that pulley a bigger diameter. It seems to have plenty of power anyway, which is my main concern. Back down again, and it goes about the same speed down, which means the motor's not labouring too much going up, of course. Um, if it was struggling, then it would be going much slower, and it's not, so that's good. So there we go. I fitted a little end stop here, which the motor rests against, as I mentioned. And the pulley's turning in the right direction, so that the cord is coming right... Uh, centrally out of the pulley and going straight up which is good I mirrored these arms to make the obviously the other arm but the one thing I didn't do was mirror the worm gears so in fact the pulley on the other arm turns the wrong way which means to pull against the end stop the cord is not in the middle so I need to reprint one of these these worm gears as a mirror for the other arm at least the other two I can deal with in software a couple of people had asked what happens when the motor moves to another position and actually I've put this motor in the middle position now so the worm gear with the pulley on is free to move and of course um, it's a worm gear driving the pulley so it doesn't back drive I can go and move this manually actually and wind it up some more or uh, unwind it if I can get my hand in there but obviously on its own it stays in position and when the motor's of course in the middle position it's then able to drive that uh, track that we designed so the arm can rotate instead just run that back the other way that seems to work pretty well I've reprinted and put the opposite worm gear on now you can't really see it in there but all of these face the other way so now the shaft on the um, pulley means the string can come out direct center so we need to put some feedback on the joint so when we bend the elbow we get feedback and we've already got a feedback point on the rotational part here so I've got a little potentiometer that gives the position and I need to do that on the elbow as well so the plan was that the original elbow axis was quite narrow so this was going to sit on the axis of the elbow in there but now it's going to make the elbow really wide if I stick the pot on the outside here so I'm going to have to think of something else so I've made this little gadget here which is a little bendy arm that's going to sit in there 
with a piece like that that's going to bridge across the joint. So as the joint bends, we should hopefully find that this bends. And so I'm going to attach that and see how well it works. So my pot is attached and I've stuck the other end on there. It's on a little rotating thing I've just stuck on with sticky tape for now in case I need to reposition it. But obviously now as the elbow bends, we can see hopefully rotation about this pot shaft. So we've got at least 90 degrees there pretty much the same as the elbow. I also have to put feedback pots in the rotation for the arms and also in the hands there and I still need to put those series elastic actuator sensors in for the string tension. There isn't quite as much space as I planned there to be but it's still possible to do but I'm going to come back and do that when I do the sensing when I do Ultron's AI and I still need to actually put the force sensitive resistors in the other joints and tune them up so check out the previous episodes for the plan on that. So also the hands are going to get left as well. There's quite a lot of hand projects online, the open hand project, the open bionics project. I'm going to design some from scratch, but again, I'm going to come back and do that when I do more cosmetics. Next time, I'm going to be working on actually putting electronics in this so we can get it moving. We've done a lot of episodes of building it and not many with actual electronics and feedback and having all of those joints moving. I want to at least get it moving with scripted moves and later on, the rest of the project will be about its AI, the motion capture suit, and basically how it's going to be controlled with sensing and so on. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including all my videos early and also a regular live broadcast with me. So don't forget to check that out. All right, that's all for now.